For eons and eons, societies have engaged in traditions, rituals and ceremonies. They have been singing the same songs, dancing the same dances, praying the same prayers over and over again. What could possibly be wrong with that? Hi, I'm Hans Wille, and I know that this short new video on traditions may ruffle some feathers. We will take a closer look from the spiritual perspective at something that is very dear to many and even sacred to some. To fully understand the impact of traditions in our life, we may want to take a big step away from the tapestry of life and remind us why we are here in the first place. We are here in our very short earthly life to free ourselves from anything that binds us, like our karma and the cycle of continued reincarnation. Our goal is freedom and the return to our spiritual home from where we once came. In light of this very simple and clear purpose of life, anything that tries to bind us to this earth in any form is a deterrent in our spiritual growth. And traditions are binding us not only to this earth, but also to the past, to some event that happened a long, long time ago, a time when the world was different and we, as an awakening species, were at a different level of consciousness. As Krishnamurti said, all tradition is merely the past. It's over. Allow me to give you an example. Imagine we would keep repeating the same birthday party that we had when we were six years old for the rest of our life. Meanwhile, we have grown and matured, but we keep celebrating that exact same birthday party over and over again. We sing the same children's song, play the same children's games every year. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? And that is how traditions with repeated ceremonies, rituals or customs keep us stuck in the past. They do not acknowledge or honor our growth, our very own unique personal life experience, our own evolution. They bind us to something that other people found important at their time in the past. It is all a matter of vibration. Tradition ceremonies and rituals bind us through their vibration into systems, like religions, nationalities, races, cultures. But our nature and our birthright is freedom, which is exactly the opposite. Remember the origin of our soul? It is not of this earth. It is well beyond these transient human and earthly concepts. We are spiritual beings just having a human experience. We all came from up here. Our soul is not white, black, Muslim or Hindu, French or American. These are merely the environments into which our soul incarnated to start our present life cycle here on earth. But if we cling fervently to any of these earthly identifications, traditions, rituals and ceremonies, chances are that our soul will adopt that vibration. And after death, our soul might then be attracted to pockets of similar souls in the lower astral worlds, who blindly continue the same ancient rituals and beliefs without ever having questioned them. We can get stuck there for thousands of years because we are of similar vibration, like attracts like, and that is a danger. Traditions also have been used to trap and bind us in many other ways. Let's look at them. Take the tradition of Thanksgiving here in America. What meant to be a heartfelt thank you for the harvest and the good that we have received during the year has now turned into a traveler's nightmare cartoon characters parade and an annual bloody mass slaughter of 50 million turkeys. Whatever has that to do with the giving of thanks? Why do we celebrate Valentine's Day? Isn't loving our partner something we want to do all the time and not limit to just one special day? Why do we celebrate Mother's Day? Is it really enough to honor and love our parents just once a year? Wouldn't it be better if we repent and ask for forgiveness every time we realize we have made a mistake instead just once a year at Yom Kippur? Wouldn't it be better if we avoid ill speech, arguments, loss of temper and malicious behavior every day and not just at Ramadan? Or look how Christmas has been diverted into an orgy of consumerism and Easter into the celebration of a bunny. Tradition, ceremonies, rituals, customs and unique clothing can also boost our ego and vanity as they, have, as they are basically all tribal and promote exclusivity and allow us to feel special and different to others. 
It is not that worldly traditions, rituals and ceremonies are in themselves all wrong or bad. They have given structure of stability to many in an otherwise often chaotic world. But like with any other artificial support system, eventually there comes the time we have to walk without these crutches and think and act for ourselves. Some people hold on to traditions in the belief that they honor their ancestors. But instead of imitating and repeating over and over again their story, their fears, their beliefs, their triumphs and their sufferings from long, long ago, wouldn't it be much better if we honor our parents and ancestors by becoming the most noble, the most loving, honest, kind and evolved human being we can imagine to be? That would be truly respecting and honoring the sweat, the education, the sacrifice of our parents and ancestors. It is also the way of honoring God. The Dutch philosopher Spinoza said it so well. True community arises when we understand our unity with God and replace it with all other affiliations, be it religions, culture, race or nationalities. But that should not stop us to have great parties, happy get-togethers, celebrations and fun whenever the occasion arises. After all, we are spiritual beings and our true essence is joy. In the spiritual worlds, the pure heavens, there are endless opportunities for festivities with others. But these gatherings are not rigid, not binding or stuck in old patterns. They are alive, organic, spontaneous and very harmonious and also include song, dance, fragrance and even food. Nobody in the spiritual world would ever say, come, let's have exactly the same festivity as we had last year. That would be stagnation. A final point. Let us also not confuse rituals, ceremonies or special clothings with spirituality. They are absolutely not the same. The reason why many gurus, teachers, cults or religious groups promote rituals in their program is to bind their members. Performing a ritual, ceremony or tradition puts a person into the same unique vibration as the group or their leader. This also includes the practice of chanting, which is a very powerful tool to bind followers to gurus and their beliefs. It is also to elicit the feeling of specialness and exclusivity among the members. It has little to do with spirituality, which is, in its truest sense, the opposite, freedom. God or love does not need any tradition, ceremonies, rituals or special garments. These are all man-made concepts that eventually we will have to let go of to become free again. Thank you for watching.